What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Force here with, yes, some more Overwatch news. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Obviously, the big anniversary event just took place, uh, launched yesterday. We got a ton of new stuff with it. Pretty exciting. A bunch of new skins and those dance emotes. But what's interesting to note is the sheer amount of stuff and also, to go with that, the cost of this event compared to others. Thanks to Reddit user Desks Up, he broke down the math and the numbers behind this event. Event. Now, the credit cost for this event is astronomically more expensive than that of prior events at roughly 56,000 credits for 108 items. Now, most of this cost is due to the whopping 11 legendary skins, which makes cost 33,000 total. That makes up about 60% of the total cost of this event if you were to purchase everything just with in game credits. There's also the 24 dance emotes, 48 voice lines, and 25 sprays that make up the the other 40% of the cost. Now, just for comparison's sake, once again, it's about 56,000 credits if you were to buy everything in this event, compared to Uprising at nearly 37,000 credits, Year of the Rooster, that was about 37,000, Winter Wonderland was 33,000, and Halloween Terror, 31,000 credits. And then if you were to include the Summer Games, it would have been about 32,000 credits if any items were purchasable. But as we know, with the Summer Games, you could only get the loot boxes and open items. You could never actually outright purchase them. So, as you can see, it's nearly 19,000 more credits if you were to purchase all items outright compared to every other event. The, the highest other costing event, which was Year of the Rooster. So, yes, hands down, this is the most expensive event. But, as we know, nobody has to purchase all items with just credits, because you get credits by getting duplicates when opening loot boxes, which means that you're getting items when opening those loot boxes, which means that, yeah, in the process of trying to purchase some of what you want, you're going to get some things along the way. Nevertheless, though, that doesn't shake the fact that this is a very pricey event. Now, as we mentioned, this is primarily due to the 11 legendary skins. A lot of prior events would get somewhere in the vicinity of four legendary skins, so we're looking at nearly triple the amount of legendary skins in this event. So I guess there's really two ways of looking at it. One way you could sit here and say Blizzard is being super greedy, they're adding a ton of new legendaries, which is in incredibly expensive, trying to incentivize people to buy those loot boxes, which as a business we could nod in agreement and say yes, there's probably some truth to that. But the other way of looking at it is that they really wanted to add a ton of really cool looking skins. They grade those skins at legendary tier because of the, the time, effort, and the cool factor that goes into it. Obviously a lot of this is debatable, some people will like some legendary skins more than others. Personally, I happen to really love a lot of these skins. Now, what isn't my favorite is the cost of the skins. Uh, 3000 has been the baseline price for legendaries, and since we've got 11 of those in this, that is where a lot of the cost is coming to make this the most expensive event. But even that, I'm not particularly upset with, because yeah, it's been the baseline for quite some time. What I'm more upset with is the abysmal duplicate currency that you get. It costs 3000 to get get one of these legendary skins. If you get a duplicate of one of them, you get 200 credits as a kickback. Uh, you can't do anything with a duplicate item. All you get is the credit kickback and it's only 200 for an item that costs 3,000. That is an abysmal conversion rate and I really think it's something that Blizzard should consider revisiting because it's already the case that people are going to be spending money on these loot boxes. You don't need to screw us over by getting so little in return turn for duplicate. That's a bit of an annoyance. Either way, the bottom line, the end of the day, as I've talked about a lot in the past when it comes to this stuff, is none of it's game breaking, none of it's gameplay oriented. All of the new maps, the game modes, the new heroes, everything that actually revolves the, the true content of this game, besides cosmetics, continues to be absolutely free, and they continue to produce this stuff at the clip that they are because they have this cosmetic system that, yes, people will buy into, but people don't have to buy into. And, and that's really, it really just depends. There, the, people take a, a firm stance on this, I've come to find. Some people are absolutely okay with these systems. Some people say, I spent my $60, cosmetic or not, I should be getting everything. Uh, the fact of, I guess, business and the fact of the way these companies work is that, no, you're not going to get perpetual monthly updates for infinity if they're not making some sort of extra revenue. And I think cosmetics is one of the best ways to do it because it isn't absolutely necessary 
necessary. As much as your brain might be telling you that you need all these skins, you don't. You get all the heroes, you get all the maps, you get everything that's gameplay relevant for free. You can tell, obviously, from the way I've been talking about this, where I fall on this side of the issue, but I also fully understand, and I hear people who say, I spend my 60 bucks, I should get absolutely everything forever for free, because I already spent the money. I get it. It's just, I think, a difference of opinions when it comes to these sort of things. Myself, personally, if they continue to release all these heroes, all these game modes, all these new maps, all this gameplay stuff, free of charge, not charging us for additional content, and then just make money off of these cosmetic skins that admittedly are cool, that people want. I mean, they're designed to be that way, but that aren't absolutely necessary and aren't... That's that's a preferable way for me personally than every six months or year them charging another $40 for an expansion or a DLC pack, which a lot of other games do if they're gonna fund continued development past the first couple of years. This is just a system that I personally prefer, but yes, there's no denying that this event is the most expensive event, and um, that's gonna piss a lot of people off. Now, I also wanted to just quickly talk about, we got a lot of really awesome stuff. I've been loving, absolutely loving, the new maps for the elimination mode and the tweaks that have happened to elimination mode. But along with new stuff like this, there tend to be new glitches, and we indeed have some. Genji has this glitch that allows him to get out of the map on both Black Forest and Castillo, which then lets him shoot through walls and attack the enemies. There was also evidently a Reaper glitch that allows him to shot shadow step off the Castillo map. Blizzard is aware of these things. They're looking into it and going to be fixing them. Evidently, they're all uh, tied to the same problem that they're having, I'm guessing, with some of the invisible walls, the boundaries on the map not working properly. And then it's also worth mentioning that with this anniversary event, we did get that big balance update that was on the PTR a couple of weeks ago. We talked about all those changes already, but just as a reminder, there were changes to Genji and Hanzo, Orisa, Reaper, Reinhardt, and Soldier. Uh, we got a couple of slight nerfs, some buffs, some quality of life things. Nothing really sweeping and major, but there were definitely some changes. I think the biggest buff is probably to Hanzo. Uh, he got some nice changes to his attack speed and the ability to jump off of the walls and stuff like that. So some interesting stuff. Um, I'll link you guys to my prior video talking about all these changes from when they were on the PTR, because it looks like they all went through as is. And that is pretty much going to do it for me here today, guys. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Love to know what you think about this video, about the topics. Please let me know in the comments section below. As always, I hope you have a good one. And until next time, I'll see you later.